I believe we are live, Melissa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live Art Mini. Stephen Smith, joining you here from Inside Out Studio. And I'm here with Melissa Talley. How's it going today, Melissa? Good. Good. Anyone that you want to say hi to out there? Terry. Say Terry. Terry's right behind us. Hey! <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Mom and Dad, if you are watching, happy Friday to everyone. We're going to be doing some watercolor techniques today, some basic ones. I can't claim to be a watercolor expert, but we dabble in a little bit of everything here at Inside Out Studio. Melissa, how do you feel about watercolor? It's messy. It's a little bit messy? Yeah. Yeah. Watercolor can be hard to control, so hopefully with some of these techniques, we'll show you how to wrangle it and then keep it in line. So we are watching, got my little Facebook up here to the side here. So let me know if you have any comments. If you have any questions, give us a like, give us a heart. Thank you for joining in if you're there today. And a big thank you to Sherry Armstead and Symmetry Gallery. There's that tile still up there. Boom. So Sherry Armstead, Symmetry Gallery are a season sponsor here for Live Art Mini. So thank you very much for that. They're located on Sims Road in Fairfield. And they also sell one-of-a-kind handmade art from American artists. Is that pretty cool, Melissa? Mm-hmm. You ever been there? No. You gotta go check it out sometime. Take the family. All right. So we are gonna get started here with some watercolor lessons. So we're gonna go to the overhead camera. I've already gone and jumped in with a few things. So right now you're looking at what's in front of Melissa and I. And what did you select today to work from? What's your picture? An elephant and trees. Right. So you work with staff to get an elephant and trees. Yeah. I'm going to slide that in the frame here so everyone can see. And then since that's what Melissa selected, I also chose a similar theme picture. So I chose an African landscape here. It's also got a tree. And then I got a picture of an elephant. So I combined mine together to do something similar in theme to you. Is that pretty cool? Mine's cuter than yours. Yours is cuter than and mine. adorable. <laughs> Mine's a little rough and bumpy right now. Mm. But see the sketch right there? It's just a light sketch. I use watercolor pencils on mine. That way it kind of blends in with everything. And I'm going to hold up the cuter one. Yeah. Melissa's. Very nice. All right, Melissa, the first thing we need to talk about is mixing our watercolors. So you might have seen a few weeks ago, if you were tuned in, we used liquid watercolors. So it came in a bottle, and you can pretty much just pour it out. It's already fully liquid. You can thin it down with some water. Today we're going to explore paint tubes. So when you squeeze these out, they come out just like oil paints, acrylic paints. They're pretty thick, huh? Yeah. You also have to thin those down with water. It gives you some control in terms of the thickness, the thinness, how transparent you want it to be. But we already got started with some cobalt blue and some phthalo blue. But just to show you the mixing process, we'll go ahead and start to mix some an ochre and an orange. So we're going to shoot for that. So it's kind of like clay dirt down there at the bottom of the scene. So what I always like to do is mix a few colors together just to make things a little bit more, well, complicated for one, because I always like to do that, but a little more sophisticated in terms of color. So you squeeze out just a dollop of yellow ochre, and I'm going to hit it with a touch of brilliant red. So ochre is kind of like a dull orange. Got some red in there just to spice it up a little bit. You can always do some layering with watercolors, but I prefer not to do things straight out of the tube because the colors are really intense. And especially if you're going to do a landscape, you want things to be a little bit more neutral and mixed. All right, we ready to mix, Melissa? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to do a little dollop of water in there. 
And then I'm using an acrylic brush to mix in the liquid watercolor. Because that breaks up the thicker paint that comes out of the tube and really disperses the pigments into the water itself. How's that look? Good. Good. Is your elephant going to be on some clay dirt or are they going to be running through the grass? Very good. You say that. Well, it's your choice. Should we do dirt or grass for the elephant? Um. What do they usually like to walk on? I don't know. I think they walk on both. I'm no expert on elephants either, so I couldn't tell you what they prefer. But what do you prefer? Maybe we just start off with the sky while we're working on thinking about that? Yeah. Okay. So I started the sky with two different tones of blue. You've got the phthalo at the top, which is deeper and darker. And then how does that compare to the cobalt down here, Melissa? I see purple in it. Yeah, it's kind of purpley. The phthalo is a little bit more synthetic and tense. Cobalt's got a little purplish tone. It's a little bit lighter. So your phthalo is up here. Your cobalt's right there. So you want to start laying in some sky tones. Maybe go with the blues. Yeah. And say so one thing that you can do. Yeah. He's going to recommend this size for you. I'm going to use the big flat lines. Well, we want to use the, the big brush for larger areas. One thing I was going to suggest is think about clouds. And I was just going to keep my picture in front of you. So instead of actually drawing the clouds with pencil, you could paint the blue around where the clouds are. Because they do make white watercolor paints, but it's more for mixing and blending than it is for painting on. So what we try to do is leave the white of the paper, the white of the picture. So you kind of have to avoid that. Can I pop this over here by you? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you that brush for the blue. And I'll grab my brush too if you want to paint along next to each other. It doesn't have to look like mine. Every painting, every artist has a different technique, different look to it. What I'm going to do is also look over at your picture, or my picture, and start to cut in around the top edge of the cloud. Now they do make something called masking fluid. We don't have any of that here at the studio right now. But What's that? Masking fluid is something you could paint onto the paper to block it. Okay, so I'm you, getting paint. Where do you want me to start? I was going to say, you can start on your painting over here. Okay. So since you asked, masking fluid absorbs into the surface of the paper. That way, if you mistakenly paint over top of it, the colors don't go there, and you can always peel it up later. It's almost like a resist. It resists the watercolor paint. Then Melissa, what you can do is kind of drag the paint away from the edge of the tree. So watch here. If I'm doing the edge of a cloud, I'm going to keep painting with this brush of paint for a long time because watercolor brushes really absorb a lot of moisture, absorb a lot of color, and it lets you flow with it. But you've got one skill that's required with watercolors, which is to paint slower. Because if you paint fast, that's when it gets loose and starts spreading it everywhere. And then can make the paper buckle. All right, we've got Beth Turner watching out there. An old friend from LC. Remember Beth from the Liberty Center? Yeah. So 
see it really spread out that paint. Watercolor brushes are made to absorb a lot of moisture. Like I said, it's softer bristles and they're spread a little bit farther apart. So it traps the moisture, it traps the paint in there and lets you work with it over a period of time. Can I show you something cool you can do on yours? Yeah. So you've got a very thick ridge of watercolor just sitting there on the edge of that tree. If you wanted to spread that out to make more of the sky, you could fill your brush with just plain water. I'll do a quick example over here. Mm -hmm. Take it right to the edge and start spreading it out. That's the thing about painting the sky and not just the line. I'm going to try to experiment a little bit with that. Mm -hmm. And then what's cool is you get all these different nice tones. You get some lighter blues, deeper blues. What's nice about the, the surface of a watercolor is it has that nice layered and texture effect to it. And I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to switch to cobalt blue. As the sky moves farther back in space, general techniques for landscapes is you want to paint from the back to the front. So we get the background first, and then we tackle what's in the foreground closest to the view. I'm just painting in and out between the clouds, trying to lay some tone down. Do you want to switch to a bigger brush for the outer edges? I'm really just painting in the sky. So the different theories of painting in layers is painting from the back for, background to the foreground and also painting with your light colors first, moving to your darker ones later. That way you can work it up subtly. Just going to start to play with some lines in the back there. might be able to switch to a bigger brush. Let's try it with this one here. I'd still encourage you to paint slow. We're going to drag some of that paint out to the open area. Really thinking about painting in the sky here. And if you feel like there's a cloud up there, you can just go around it and avoid it. I'm going to switch to that brush, yeah. get some more blue up there. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to let you paint some more sky. I'm going to jump over to our program here. So we do want to check in with Debbie over at Symmetry Gallery, see what they have in store right now. So we're just going to pause just for a second from our watercolor painting and hear a little bit from her. I'm here at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. I am Sherry Armstead's daughter, and we want to thank you for your continued support of our small local business here in Fairfield. Inside Out Studio has always been a mission that Sherry and Symmetry has supported in their mission to help young artists and giving them opportunities. If you're new to Symmetry and our store, please come in and visit us at 1000 Sims Road. Mention that you saw the Inside Out Studio video and receive 10% off your next purchase. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Debbie. We're also going to pause to share some other artwork with you. Hey, hey, Melissa, I got some special artwork to share. 
so here's a watercolor painting that was recently done. So take a look up here for a second. Check this out. Everyone's looking at that bunny right now. Terry, so she made that. You know who made that? Terry. Terry Elms made that. So Terry Elms. Most of you know that Inside Out Studio has just completed an eight-week course at the Middletown Art Center. So she did some watercolor paintings. This is the first one that she did. And she also painted that boat. That she did. So she did a, a rabbit probably around Easter time. And then she remade it herself at home. She's trying to do some other techniques. So you can see in this watercolor the variation of the greens of the, the grasses in the background. And you can see the texture on the bunny there. It's called a dry brush effect. So after you lay down your initial layer of watercolors, you can go back with very, very little moisture in your brush and just kind of add some texture from the bristles. And then this is the next piece that she did. You see nice complementary colors there in that boat. What do you think of that, Melissa? It's a cool boat. It is a cool boat. I'm going a, I'm to a ride on that boat. Awesome. What grade would you give it? A plus. A plus. You just got an A plus from Melissa Terry. Oh, A plus. <laughs> no sweat. <laughs> <laughs> so good job to Terry doing that eight-week watercolor course, improving her skills. At this point, she's probably a better watercolor artist than I am. So she should be up here hosting. What do you guys think? Nah. No. No. Oh, Aw, come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. Join the crowd. <laughs> All right, we got a nice compliment from Carlotta. She says, nice, so thank you for that. I think she was referring to Terry's paintings. She did a great job on that. All right, let's add some more to our watercolor painting here. We're telling everyone about some watercolor techniques out there, Melissa. I'm starting to add in some of this orange dirt down here at the bottom of my scene. Do you know what I did up here? What? I painted right over top of my tree in my scene. Like that. But I did that on purpose because when you're working with watercolors, after the surface dries, you could always take a darker color right over top of a lighter one. So there are some layering techniques that you can do. You just have to wait for your surface to dry before you move on. So obviously we're not going to be finishing our pieces today on Live Art Mini. So one of the keys to watercolor is to take your time, go slow and work in layers. Do you want to move on to some grass down there at the bottom, Melissa? Should we, should we mix a little bit more? All right, so I'm going to mix two colors of grass for you because I'm going to jump back here to Terry's painting for an example of that. So if you look into the background, there's nice shades of olive green, deep green, kind of like a middle green, and then with the watercolor effects, you can see all the variations of lightness and darkness. So a key to making things interesting is a little bit of variety. So instead of just one green for your tree or grass, let's try a variety of greens. Let's just jump back to the mixing palette. I'm going to start here with a sap green. What's that? Sap green is kind of like a deep dull green, but I've got a big amount of it, like maybe dime size amount. I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny bit right there. And for variety, what I'm going to do is mix it with some yellow ochre. So it should still stay green, it's just going to get a little bit lighter and duller, just for some variety. And then I'm going to pull out some Viridian, which is a deep green, but it has kind of like an aqua tint to it. So look how dark that one is. Too dark? No, it's not too dark. And I can even add, let's say, some lemon yellow to this other sap green. So we're basically creating a variety of greens 
Three is always my magic number. Two is too little, four is too many. Three is a good variety. Like I said, if you're doing a watercolor, they can all mix together. Any good. And just pour some water in there. And while you're painting, I'm going to mix these up for you. Once again, you get a thicker bristled brush, like an acrylic. Start to break up the watercolor paint from the tube. Mix it up till there's no clumps left. Now we got our trios of greens. A dark viridian. We got a ochre sap. And then a little bit brighter sap with the yellow. And you could use those anywhere in your trees. You could use them in the grass. Just give it a variety. I'm going to do a little bit more down here along the bottom of the elephant. And just reiterate some of those tips. Once you get your bristles loaded with the watercolor, you can really move it around the paper. You want to move it slowly. That way it doesn't make the paper ripple or buckle because of too much moisture too fast. All right, I think that's a good brush worth of some of the orange clay around the feet of the elephant. Now I'm going to jump in with some browns to work on that tree to show people how you can layer. And I'm going to use the tiniest brush in the world. It's so tiny. It is so tiny. It's going to get all those nice branch details. So I'm just going to take some of this raw umber. And then while I'm working on that, you can keep painting there, Melissa. It might take us like six, seven live art minis to finish this. But we won't do that. We're just giving a quick example today. Some quick tips on watercolor painting. We didn't even talk about the paper, did we? No. So don't forget, you always need watercolor paper, which is a thicker stock paper. It has a pebbled surface to help absorb all that moisture. You can also use hot press boards, cold press boards, pretty much a thicker substrate that's going to stand up to all the moisture going into it. You know, if paper gets wet, it crumbles and dissipates really easily, so you got to have that special watercolor paper. Do you want to work on some greens for your grass? Okay. I think I need a thicker brown. That one's a little bit too transparent. So I need it to stand up to that background color. So since I'm painting a brown over top of a lighter blue, it should look more opaque. So I'm just going to mix a different brown. Feel free to go into some of your grass or tree there. Take some of this brown. Do you know what would make this orange brown a little bit darker? What? Some blue. Because it's the complementary color. It's opposite from it on the color wheel. Let's 
Your elephant standing in the lake there, getting a drink of water? Yeah. All right. Start laying in some branches here. Hey, Michelle Barnes Davis is watching out there today. You ever do dance class with Michelle? Or no. No? Hello, Michelle. Hope you're having a great Friday. Hope to get some dance classes started again, too. All right, so I'm starting to lay in some tree branches, kind of loosely basing it on the photo that was selected off to the top left there. Like I would go back in and add some more shading on this too. relaxing Melissa? Yes. I think it is. So just like Terry, I'd encourage all of you out there to check out the local art centers. Take some art on the side. I know that they are still having classes. You just have to go mask. It's definitely fun and relaxing. We hope to have our classes up and going here by July so our artists can teach you everything that they know from glass to ceramics to painting. Very good. Take one last few strokes there, Melissa. We'll keep working on this after we're done today, but we are going to limit it to a half hour. So we'll just take a few minutes to say bye to everyone. Melissa, 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 are you going to shift this year? Yes. All right. What is shift? Um. You know what we're going to have there? What kind of entertainment? Let me help you out? Yeah. Okay. So Shift is our first fundraiser of the year here for Inside Out Studio. It's happening down at River's Edge Amphitheater on May 15th. It goes from 7 to 11. We're going to have DJ sets on stage. We're going to have our artists doing live art on stage. We're going to have food from two women in a kitchen. We've got drinks from the Brew Works. We've got soft drinks for everybody else. And we've got circus performers coming, stilt walkers, jugglers, and fire spinners. So May 15th, check out and follow our Facebook page for a link for the tickets as well as previews for that party. Does that sound like a good time? Yeah. I think so. I'll be there. I'll be working. I'll be having fun too. All right, let's go check in with some of the other artists here at the studio today. So I'm going to unplug this from our overhead camera. Melissa, you can go ahead and keep painting. Make sure I don't trip over or slide over our microphone. Oh, Mr. Dale Murphy, you want to say hi to anyone today? Who is that? Hi, for Jerry. He, Jerry is not here. Who's that? Jerry. Jerry's not here. So hi, Jerry, Jacoby, and Fran. If you guys happen to be watching out there, we miss you. Do do. Tracy, 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 how are we doing today? <laughs> Uh, hi. All right. We don't have to take our mask off to say hi. They can still hear you. We got a microphone. Uh, hi. Hello, everyone. There's Miss Jody Mann. Hi. Hi. She's going to take a hard right. I was saying Kat she didn't Kathleen, what are you working on today? <laughs> tiny, fierce dragon. Rawr. Tiny, tiny, fierce dragon. Very cool. Rawr. And then we'll check in with uh, Miss Miss Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe, what'd you make today? A mosaic. What is your mosaic of? Oh, Middletown. We got a Middletown Middies mosaic. Very good. Hi everybody. Hello again to Jody. All right, we'll slide over here for a couple more people before we leave today. Miss Tiffany, you're on live right now. Who do you want to say hi to? Hi. Everybody. Everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody. And we have a new face in the studio. This is Miss Stephanie Sheets. Hi, guys. 
So I want to introduce everyone to Stephanie. She's new to the Inside Out family. Just finished your second week here at the studio. What do you think so far? It's awesome here. Awesome. We're, we're happy to have you. So from everyone here at Inside Out Studio to everyone watching today, thank you very much. Check out the tickets for Shift. Keep watching Live Art Mini. And we will see you soon.